Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And she might not be as feisty today. She had some dental work done this morning. I don't have gauze, but I have sutures, so I'm I'm not gonna try to scream. Yeah, so she got the I mean I am gonna try not to scream. You know what I mean. Yeah, she, I'm on pain meds. Yeah, so she, she's going to be a little more chill in this video, but we're going to talk about The Little Mermaid. Had to have her sit in on this one because it's a Disney-related video. Well, the stupidity of it all. So now The Little Mermaid is being criticized for erasing slavery because the live-action Little Mermaid takes place presumably in the Caribbean in the 1800s. And where are all the slaves? Yeah, you know, to be fair, people did mention this when they said it was going to be in the Caribbean. People were like, well, wait a minute. So this is kind of what happens when you start to, you know, tamper, pander to a certain group, pander to a certain group, especially when it comes to uh, historical pieces. Sometimes you start pulling at threads that uh, you know, have some questions that are uncomfortable to answer. So, well, maybe something works one way, but as soon as you race bend a character, it no longer works. And maybe you shouldn't do that just for, you know, high fives. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, this guy has, he went on a bender and then I guess he erased it. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Then we're going to talk about Splash Mountain. Since so he is. erased his bender on slavery? So he erased the slavery comments? He, he erased the slavery comments. I just, yeah. I'm sorry. I just find that ironic. Uh, then we are going to talk about Splash Mountain and cancel culture and uh, how Inside the Magic is basically all right. What happened? What happened Inside the Magic? What mm. happened to you? It's a taint of clownfish. Uh, so we're going to talk about all this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, if you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo. It's not, not as... Woohoo. And clap still. There you go. I can do that. You could be like Ariel and not not talk, but then it would be very awkward to you know, would. Do, do a video without you talking. Well, they can't see me either, so I can't use body language. All right, so this is coming from Deadline. Uh, the Little Mermaid has been criticized by a prominent media diversity advocate. So, uh, an activist. An activist for failing to acknowledge the horrors of slavery in the Caribbean. Right, because when you take your kids to a mermaid movie, that's what you want to take your kids to see. Where are all the slaves in the Disney movie? Oh, my God. Marcus Ryder, an influential British campaigner who also chairs the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Activist. Yeah, celebrated the casting of Halle Bailey, but took issue with the film's glossy depiction of racial harmony. Now, uh, uh -huh. we're going to talk about Song of the South because this is damn near identical. The same argument that everybody is using against Song of the South. They're like, they're just a bunch of happy slaves. That wouldn't have happened. Well, they weren't actually slaves. They were sharecroppers. And Splash Mountain didn't feature the live action Song of the South characters either. It was just the animal well, characters. Well, I love the racial harmony. I mean, the racial harmony we had for decades, but now you all are trying to, uh, you know, upend. And you, you want it to be not, you know, no, you don't want people to be fighting and not being in harmony. And then the next thing is, I love these people who want racial harmony and who think things are bad and how you need to, to address the, the, the fact about you know, slavery and the Caribbean, but are also the same type of people that call everybody who doesn't agree with them Nazis. Yeah, so uh, after watching the remake with his son, Ryder felt compelled to write a blog post about the I movie. I bet he did. Which he said missed an opportunity to gently educate children. Now, right under this related story, Little Mermaid swimming against strong tides at overseas box office, leaving break even in question. I thought yeah. this was the biggest. Well, the don't biggest you know it's because it's all because it's all racist overseas. It um, is. That's the argument. Ryder said the Little Mermaid appears to be set in the 18th century at a time of African chattel slavery. I think it's just set in a generic set in a generic area to see the Caribbean at some point in time. Caribbean light, like Disney's cruise ships. And right. I don't think it's yet. meant to be like it's the actual historical Caribbean. It's like Gilligan's <laughs> Island. God, I hate to break it to you, but you know, uh, fish and crabs don't talk either. But here we are. It's called fiction for a reason. Ironically, on all my different boards, whenever somebody starts saying about anything revol involving the Little Mermaid or having an issue with the race bending or anything like that, it's not for you. It's for children. And it's, you know, it's just another interpretation. It's not real. It's fiction. It's not real. It's fiction. It's, fiction. it's not really the Caribbean. So, 
Yeah, I do not think we do our children any favors by pretending that slavery didn't exist, he wrote in the blog post, entitled Disney's The Little Mermaid, Caribbean Slavery and Telling the Truth to Children. Right, because don't you know, even though things happen, I mean, I agree with you, you shouldn't forget history, but it shouldn't be what you lead with for everything you do. I'm getting so tired of something that happened hundreds of years ago, but we have to bring it up every time. You know, like again, says the same group, types of people, not necessarily this person, the same type of people that want to call everybody who doesn't agree with them Nazis. They conveniently like to forget about that part of history, even though that part of history is a lot more recent. Oh, oh we're getting to the Nazi Oh, part. okay. Of course we are. Literally the very of next course we paragraph. Are. Uh, setting the fantastical story in this time and place is literally the equivalent of setting a love story between a Jew and a Gentile in 1940 Germany and ignoring the Jewish Holocaust. So this is akin to... Being a Holocaust. So basically, wiping slavery, at, if, if I'm understanding this guy correctly, wiping slavery or references to slavery out of The Little Mermaid is akin to being a Holocaust denier. Is that, is that, I, is that, I just what love, I'm get, I just love to say people that would be you know, cheering this person on are the ones calling everybody Nazis and they don't agree with them over a movie. Uh, so he took the post down, probably because. Probably of that. a good idea. Um, he said Disney could have set the film in Haiti. Uh, because, you know, Haiti over overthrew the shackles of slavery. Uh, we owe it to our children to give them the most amazing, fantastical stories possible to help their imaginations grow. We do not do this by whitewashing. No, no, no. You do that by blackwashing instead. Uh, we, the whole character. We do it by embracing our rich history and empowering them with truth. I because just, oh mermaids are real. You know what? Yes, mermaids. Because that's Talking that's their argument. Crabs. When people said, "Why are we change? Why are we why are we we race swapping Ariel? Well, mermaids aren't real. It's fiction." Well, you know, when people bring up questions, oh, it doesn't matter. It's fiction. But then this person's like, "Well, we it's a fictional story for kids, but we need to make sure people understand about slavery in a fictional Caribbean that wasn't the same one." You know, it's this double standard. This is what you get, Disney. When you you try to go after a certain audience, it's never enough. It's never going to be enough. It will never be enough. Wait, here. So here's this Twitter thread. Two days ago, I wrote a tweet about The Little Mermaid, which went viral. I have deleted it. But yes, I put it in millions of views it got, you know, <laughs> because it was widely well, misunderstood. I understand and appreciate the argument that The Little Mermaid is just fantasy and a fairy tale and escapism. Yes. Fantasies are power vehicles for children to understand the world around them, which is precisely why you must take care and how we as adults tell them. Well, maybe you want to start with telling, maybe, here's an idea. Maybe you want to start with telling stories to children that, you know, if they were talking about representation, that are stories that actually represent them. Stories from the areas they come from. Things like that. But you don't. Hollywood won't do that. Instead, they'll just, you know, change a character to make the character, because it's a character that people will show up for, which is in itself more insulting. Disney chose to set the fantasy in what looks like 18th century Caribbean, blah, blah, blah. We already know that. He said... Option one, pick a totally different setting free of historical baggage related to black people. Option two, keep it in the 18th century Caribbean, but avoid erasure of black history, for instance, by setting it in Haiti. Um, you know, I don't disagree with you on there, but there's option three. Don't make a live action remake at all. Or option four, if you did, you kept the mermaid the original way she should, she was, you wouldn't have all these problems because it wasn't written with this in mind. Yeah. You know, and then they go on, they are talking about Encanto and, and, um, and talk about Canto and uh, Turning Red. The difference of that and how that worked well was those characters were written to be diverse to begin with. So when they wrote the source material for it and they wrote the story, they kept that in mind the whole time. They were not created as a race bent. A race bent. They were actually whole cloth written to be representative of the cultures they're representing. They're, that's the difference here. Yeah, this is kind of what happens when you start um, uh, tinkering with with history and you start to create more problems. Right. Uh, sometimes then it's like, Oh yeah. And no one hey. wants to take their kids to see little mermaid to watch slavery. I'm sorry, dude. Except for Mark is here. <laughs> Why isn't there more slavery in this Disney movie? So speaking of which we're going to rip the bandaid right off. We're going to talk about splash mountain because apparently they have uh, shut down Disneyland splash mountain. Um, they already shut Disney worlds down. I think a couple months ago. Mm, yeah, a while ago. They're, yeah. they're already tearing that thing apart. Oh, my God. So, yeah, so they shut it down, and now now everybody's like, well, maybe there's uh, there's too much cancel culture going on. Maybe we didn't need to, uh, you know, really go so hard hard in at uh, Splash Mountain. You know, this ride was around for 30 years. Uh, very few people complained about it. It wasn't until 
2020 that everybody's like, you know, well, you know Disney, you've got that. They didn't even do that. They didn't even do that. What happened was Disney wanted the ride changed for years. And every time they tried to even drop a hint that it would, it got such pushback, they didn't do it. And then they used the um, the social unrest of 2020 to push it through. That's what happened. Um, They, look, you can't tell me that they had that uh, very well-rendered Tiana artwork laying more, around. Like in less than a week. In less than a week, they threw this up like, hey, guys, we're going to do it. Because my understanding, my understanding, uh, talking to people, was that they were, they actually were looking at The Princess and the Frog to be a replacement for uh, Splash Mountain, Song of the South from day one. There's a reason it was set in New Orleans, you know, um, that they were hoping it would be it would be the replacement for Splash Mountain. There were a lot of people at Disney that really weren't into the idea of them, you know, doing a ride based on Song of the South, but they did make sure that the human characters were not in it. That being said, people way overreact to Song of the South. Whoopi Goldberg just a couple of years ago was like, I would love to see it re-released. You know, maybe give it a little historical context, but she's like, I don't understand why this is. Well, this one it. girl was on TikTok, and she actually did a really good video. You can go out to this article, Sally. I hate to promote this article, but you can go out to there to find it or go to her TikTok, where she's basically talking. Um, it's not going to play it right now, but it's basically talking about, like, here's what people are saying about the film, but here's the reality. Like, they're having a about Tar Baby and about, oh, you, you know, names, racist names. And she's like, like, what, Tar Baby? Yeah. And they're like, that's not, they're not calling somebody a Tar Baby. That's an actual, that's a, it, it's in the movie. Mm-hmm. You didn't see the movie, you know? And like, it was slavery. It's like, well, technically they weren't slaves at the time of this, it was, they were sharecroppers, so they didn't have to be there. All this other stuff, you know, there's all this history around it, which stuff we've all mentioned before, us yeah. and other YouTube channels. Um, she does a good job, though, making it, you know, pointing it out. But Yeah, a lot of people have the most problem with Song of the South. A lot of them haven't even seen the movie. I mean, the movie itself, I'm going to be honest, it was a technological marvel, but it was boring as hell. It was, it was not, I don't think it was the best Disney movie ever. I think the animated bits were great. I think the live action bits dragged mm-hmm. quite a bit. But they deliberately left the human characters out of it because they did not want to even go there. So they replaced, uh, you know, Uncle Remus with Br'er Frog mm-hmm. and, and just kind of called it a day. But these characters have been used in overseas comics for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, there has not been a problem. I know Tokyo is like, no, we're not changing it. <laughs> no, because it wasn't racist anymore. It was just the no. characters telling them, yeah. the, you know, the, the, the moral, the stories of the morals and, and lessons and things like that. It wasn't even about anybody being culturally, you know, anything. It's just the, the, the animal stories. And this isn't, you know, look, I don't think this has anything to do with cancel culture and, and the fact that, like, a lot of people were asking for this. I think that Disney had their diversity and inclusion auditors go through the attractions mm-hmm. and be like, which ones are problematic? And they started with Pirates of the Caribbean and the Wench They auction. changed that when no one is Nobody and, and was that, And they even admitted that. Well, it was a small group internally who didn't like it. Yes. So what they, they were doing is... I was a ginger and I wasn't offended. <laughs> they're going around and they're like, yep, this ride's problematic and that ride's problematic and the Hall of Presidents is probably going to get changed too. The only thing that's going to stop them from changing stuff at this point is running out of money. Lack of funds. I think that's the only thing that's going to stop them. I don't know. They're just doing it to do it. But when you do this stuff, you get the audience you you courted and then this audience you courted is still not happy with it. Yeah. And still calling you out on it. Oh, they will. I, I can almost guarantee you when the ride reopens as Tiana, there will be people that find problems with the ride. Why aren't there more slaves <laughs> on no. the Tiana ride or no. something? They'll find They're some. They're not going to say that. They will find something to complain about. I guarantee it because you're, you, and, and the irony in all this is that, that these people were never going to go anyway. Why are you having any white people on this ride? Why are you having any white people? Why are people, white people allowed to ride this ride? Yeah, right. Oh my Why God. is anybody other than black people allowed to do it? Because I've seen shit like that. Not on this ride in particular, but people make comments. Like we saw the Black Panther. Like a, it's, the first we, opening weekend, all the white people show up to barricade the door so only black people can see it. People are like, wait, white people are supposed to come barricade the doors and keep the black people inside the theater? Lowest MCU mm-hmm. opening ever. Oh, like they literally. No, like, like you didn't think this through, did you? It's like, like it's like a, a, just a couple people saying really stupid things. Yeah. I don't want to paint everybody with a broad brush because it's not everybody. It's just a couple dumbasses. But unfortunately, that's what the media picks up with. And that's where people oh, yeah. here is like, they're like, what now? Oh, it'll be like, oh, my God. OK, Disney, now you have to give free passes to all the black folks so they can ride Tiana. Well, they were telling white people that they should pay for their tickets and let them. Just, oh, you know. OK. OK. Yeah, now, they're doing this. They're doing this to sell princess merch. 
that's what this is all about. They, they know they're going to sell a lot more Tiana dresses than they are Br'er Rabbit stuffed animals. Well, no, that's not true, because as soon as they announced they were closing it, oh. way before they closed it, people from e eBay came in and brought all the all the Br'er animal merchandise three or four years before they even closed it and walked off with it. And then they didn't close it for years. But it was still funny because they walked off with all of it. It's like, sure, now you care. Now you care. Right. You know, you didn't care before, but... Uh, Anyway, are we going to wrap this up? I yep. think we need to wrap this up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Sorry, I, I yelled loudly. That's okay. I got I got the limiter on. Okay. So uh, you can tell my kick setting. Yeah, you can you can sell you can Wait, tell really it automatically limits it when it, I yell. It does when you get when the pitch gets too high. It it <laughs> it does. When sometimes if you sound like all robotic, it's oh because it's God. it's bringing the decibels. Down. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.